everybody, how are you? Coach D here from Pure Motivation Fitness. It's Friday. You know what that means? That means we've made it through another Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I got my camera girl here, the beautiful Milena. And uh, I'm gonna be going through three amazing exercises for the advanced athlete, okay? For your core. I'm gonna be going through three amazing exercises for the beginner client because a lot of people have been um, asking what's the best exercise for my core how do I get my, my abs to show more and so forth so I'm gonna switch this around and I'm gonna have my daughter tape All right. so guys first and foremost I want to let you guys know one thing is if you want to work on your core your midsection is gonna come from your nutrition and your training and I'd say a higher percentage based on nutrition you can't build abs by doing a lot of sit-ups. The more sit-ups you actually do, the tighter the rectus abdominis gets, and the more you're in a flexion position, the worse it's gonna be for your spine, and all you're doing is creating tightness in this area versus having a nice, strong midsection that's got more mobility, okay? So the three exercises for the beginner we're gonna be talking about first, and then go to the advanced person. Know one thing, if your goal is weight loss, you wanna be doing your core exercises first not at the end. Why? Because you want to be able to have that mind to muscle connection. A lot of people are trying to do a plank or trying to do a bicycle and they're really trying to squeeze and flex the obliques and, and, and flex small muscle groups at the end of their workout. They're tired. Okay, so let's break it down. So for the first exercise I want to teach you guys is, you may have to come a little lower, my camera girl. Um, the first exercise is going to be some form of a side plank. Why? because too many of us focus on anterior and posterior, and we never focus on the lateral side of our body. So what you wanna do is go onto the ground, you're gonna bend your knees at 90 degrees, okay? You're gonna put your elbow underneath your shoulder, and all I want you to do is hold this position. Now, the key thing that people forget to do is they forget to squeeze this arm and flex your arm as well. If this position is fine, you can start going down and lifting your pelvis up. That's gonna be able to get your beginner reps going, and if you notice that this is fine and it's not that hard for you, the next step would be to put one foot out, okay, make it a little bit more advanced, and you're holding, and then as you get more advanced, two feet are gonna be going out and you're lifting your hips up. Now the key thing to remember when you're gonna be doing the side plank is to really push as high as you can go. This is as high as I think I can go, this is as high as I fully can go, okay? When you're transferring over, you're gonna transfer to this position, and hold, down, straight back up, down, straight back, okay? So first exercise, side plank. How many reps do you do? I like the number 25, it's rounded. If you go 25 times four, it's 100 reps. So try going for 20, 25 repetitions on each side. Second is gonna be a weighted dead bug. Now, the dead bug is really, really good because when you're in a supine position and you put your legs up like so, typically you'll have people say they have low back pain. So the dead bug is able to break that up by having your hands up as well. And now when you bend one knee in and one knee out, you're able to support that low back. Because as your knee comes in, this is supporting the spine, your other foot's out. Typically when people are in this position, they feel pain in the back. So an advanced way to make it harder is going to be to grab onto a what, dumbbell or a weight, whatever you have, hold on to this. So a beginner will be able to go head down, as you get more advanced, head up, shoulders off the floor, and hold. Notice how I'm not doing a bicycle, and I'm pushing my legs up, switching, 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 and I'm holding. Repetitions here are left, right is one, left, right is two, okay? And what I like about this is, when you're doing your core movements, you wanna change your body for position. You can't always go in the same position. So if I'm gonna be sitting here doing bicycles, leg raises, uh, toe touches, everything is on my back. So get used to changing your body from different angles. Thirdly, for the beginner, the plank up or the plank hip up. Come a little lower for this one. So when you're in a plank position, you wanna remember this is the best and most dominant exercise for your core. Why? Because not only am I working my midsection, I'm building strength in my spine as well, but I'm also working the joints, the wrist joint, elbow joint, the shoulder joint. I'm flexing my entire midsection, and I can work both anterior and posterior sides. 
the one thing people forget to do is to brace before your breath. So instead of me holding this, you can notice that my stomach's nice and relaxed. I'm holding. If I want to cheat, I can just cheat on my elbows. Heck, I can just cheat and lock myself up like a gymnast. And my stomach is soft. I'm not really holding it. Now I can, I can flex tight. You can see I'm holding everything tight. I can switch over and I can squeeze my stomach tight. That is how a basic plank should work. When you're working on the plank hip up, you're gonna come down to the floor, knuckles are under your throat. And this is also gonna help ladies with your push-ups because a lot of the times, your upper body's got the strength, but your lower body cannot pick up. So, knuckles under your throat, constantly under your throat, you're gonna bring your hips to 90, so drop your pelvis down, touch the floor, and thrust as high as you can go. Notice how I'm not thrusting like this. This is basically resting on my shoulders. I'm leaning forward. I'm gonna come down low and press back up. Down low, press back up and hold. Now what's amazing about this routine for the beginner, you're working the side of your body, you're working the front of your body, and the back of your body. Boom. In terms of repetition, remember, try to go 20, 25 reps. Do them in the beginning of the workout, so now that I'm tired, and my core is tired, when I'm gonna go do a lunge, I don't have to worry so much about the stabilization because I've already worked on this area, okay? Now, advanced exercises. Follow me. So we're gonna be using some form of a bar or something to hang off with. I'll show you another variation if you don't have one in your home or in your gym. But when you're looking for strength, power, you're looking to grow and build muscle, I don't suggest you do your abs in the beginning or your core work, you do it at the end. So to recap, weight loss clients do core in the beginning, weight gain clients like myself do them at the end. Why? You got a certain amount of gas in your body, a certain amount of glucose, a certain amount of energy built up in you, stored in you. When you're going to be doing deadlifts, cleaner presses, bench presses, dumbbell presses, bent over rows, you need that energy. So you cannot tire yourself out by doing advanced movements and then think you're gonna hold a, a barbell deadlift properly, okay? So first one I'll have you come from this angle. It's probably the best angle to see it. It's called the front lever. I'm gonna do this one first because it's the hardest one. Even if you cannot get this movement properly, just the beginner movements of it are gonna be super advanced. So you wanna grab onto a bar, okay, let your body hang, and from this position, you wanna go to knee tuck. Okay, you're good for the knee tuck. Second knee tuck, roll back. Okay, third position, knee tuck, roll back, toes to the ceiling. Now from this position, I'm just gonna hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Drop my legs and relax, okay? So just wanna make sure you don't get tipsy upside down. You wanna make sure you can hold your body weight upside down. When you come to the top, you're pointing your toes, you're getting a good grip, and you're squeezing your midsection, okay? Now the front lever part is, when your feet are here, your head is here, you slowly let your body fall out, but you fall up in a straight line. It's gonna be a lot of lat work. So as I'm holding on, I'm gonna be pointing my toes out, and I'm resisting with my upper body. So try from the side angles, you see what I mean? So remember, this is for advanced exercisers. Don't try this if you're a beginner. One, two, I don't want you to fall on your head. So I'll try for three reps. Basically okay, so hold, point your toes, and then resist. One. Try it again. Two, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me as well. Total body workout. Thumbs up if you can hear me. I want to make sure this is working. And you can see now, in terms of how many reps of this, if you can get five reps, you're good as a beginner. Five reps, slowly build up to it. If you cannot go all the way up because you don't have the power to push yourself up. Next is going to be any type of a knee tuck. So as I'm holding up, okay, I'm going to come up with both legs and hold. One, 
two, three, four, five, slowly come back. This alone is gonna be a hard workout. Instead of you doing this. Now I do know that a lot of CrossFit athletes are going for repetitions. There's repetitions and performance on one side of the athletic reel. And then there's control, static holds, mastering the movement like a gymnast. So you'd see someone doing them slowly and someone doing them fast. If I'm doing them fast, I'm gonna work definitely on conditioning, definitely on grip. Okay, my grip's gonna be way, way stronger. But if you really wanna focus on mastering the movement, you gotta go slow. So, first thing I would suggest, it's our second movement. Let's go one toe up, switch, switch. Once you're comfortable, both feet together, hold. If you get good at the knee straight as you drive up, you can also throw the legs to the ceiling to touch the top. Okay, so from here, coming up again. That's gonna probably help you with your front lever. So one, front lever. Number two, knee tuck. One knee at a time. Number three, we're gonna go old school, baby. It's Friday. Stability ball. Now, a lot of people have forgotten about this because they feel that nowadays with all the new exercises and the compound lifts and the metabolic conditioning, we don't need stability. However, if you're looking at your core and you're, and you're a person that's above 150, 160, 180, 195 in terms of weight, anything you do on the ball and the horizontal plane is going to challenge you much, much further. So I'll have you come around here, Milena. So from this position, the way you work on the ball is, first you got to balance walking out. So feet together like I'm diving, walk, walk, walk. As soon as I get to my ankle, I'm going to hold. Now, from this position, we can do 100 exercises. If you want to go advanced, we're going to go toe pike. Okay, toes tight, hold, hips to the ceiling, slowly roll up. If I want to make this more advanced, one foot up, one foot to my stomach, or an alternating bicycle. I can go two feet together with a knee tuck. And notice when I'm doing the knee tuck, I'm not dropping my midsection down. I'm actually lifting my hips up slightly, and then I'm turning in and then back up. Another thing you're going to notice is when you're in horizontal position, you need to keep your chest over your wrists. Ladies, trying this exercise or doing a push-up, sometimes we get in this position, which is weak. Chest over wrist. You got more power in your breast than you do in your wrist. So if you go back to the original position, we'll do two or three of the movements that I love to do. Once you're over here, we go. Hold, hold. So you'll notice that this basic movement is going to work many, many, many more muscle groups than you would if you were doing something static on the ground. Nothing is touching the ground but my wrists. So every muscle group is going to be working together. Three beginner exercises. We're going to recap side plank. Dead bug holding on to weight. You got your plank up for your third movement. And for the advanced exerciser, you got your front lever, you got your knee tuck, and you got your stability ball, horizontal tuck position as well. Hope you like this exercise. Hope you like this video. It's got me out of breath and all I did was some demonstration exercises. And if you do, please share with anybody you know that it can help. Remember when it comes to health and fitness, your attitude is everything. And if you're looking for core, you're looking for a tight midsection, it starts in the kitchen. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. That's it for us all.